Hey guys, welcome back to Enthralling Sudoku Maniacs. Slowly, with your support, we have been increasing our subscriber base. So, thank you all for the support and patronage. And with your support, we have been able to churn out more content for you and much more frequently than before. So, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, I do suggest that you do that right away and click on the bell icon. So that you are notified of new content as and when we upload it. So coming to today's puzzle, I thought today we are going to have a look at a diagonal Sudoku. I know we have never touched a diagonal Sudoku before. Touched upon rather, sorry. <laughs> we have never touched upon a diagonal Sudoku before. And this Sudoku is from, also from my first book, The Sudoku Mania Volume 1. This puzzle was on a slightly difficult level, so I thought this would be a good example to demonstrate how do we tackle a diagonal Sudoku and also how do the diagonals play an important role in helping us eliminate possibilities from a cell. We will go through that during the course of the video. But before we do that, the rules. No digit can repeat in a row, column or a 3 by 3 box. Additionally, there will be two marked diagonals on the grid top left to bottom right and top right to bottom left. No digit can repeat on the diagonals. That is the diagonals will also contain distinct 1 to 9. All the numbers from 1 to 9. Alright. So, how do we start it? Variant. I think if you have seen enough of my, of my videos, you would know how do we start a variant. That's right. We started like a classic. So I see an 8 here, an 8 here, so this has to be an 8, right? But then nothing beyond this works out as a classic. So now let's look at the 1s. This 1 and 1, which basically means the 1 is possible in R3 for box 1. But now let's use the diagonal to see where would the 1 come. When I look at the top left to bottom right diagonal, the digit 1 in box 9 eliminates 1 from these 3 cells. That right? Similarly, the 1 in box 5 will eliminate the digit 1 from the diagonal cells in box 5, which basically means for the digit 1 to occur on the top left bottom right diagonal, it has to be on the diagonal in box 1. And since there is only one place it can be, we can safely say this place is the one and we eliminate this all right then we have this one this one and a classic rule one here one one this is a one one so this oh sorry not here and this becomes my one and in this box I can't have a one here I can't have it here once again how do we find out where would the one occur Let's look at the other diagonal now. The 1 in box 3 eliminates the digit 1 from these 3 cells on the diagonal. Similarly, the 1 in box 5 once again eliminates the digit 1 from these 3. Which basically means for the top right to bottom left diagonal, the 1 has to be in box 7. And there is only one cell in box 7 on the diagonal which can post the digit 1. So we blindly put the digit 1 there and we can safely eliminate. So that would make this a 1 and this becomes a 1 and this is how we have reached all the 1s. You notice how we use the diagonals to eliminate the possibilities. Now that the 1s have been completed, let's look at the 6. 6 has to be in these two but because of this, this becomes a 6. Alright? Now, so 6, 6, 6, 6 and 6. We have 3 places, no problem. This 6 cannot be here, it cannot be here. So, this is the place for 6. So, this would be a 6. And in box 1, this is not a 6. This is not a 6. So, the 6 has to be here. And here. The 6 can be in any of these. 
Now just how we did it with the ones, let's use the diagonals for the six. Now when I look at the top left to bottom right diagonal, six for box one is either in R1C3 or R3C2. So which basically means the digit six cannot be on the top left bottom right diagonal in box one. The six in box five again does not allow the six here, which basically means for this diagonal, the 6 has to be in box 9 and there's only one cell that would allow us that. Hence, we can safely place a 6 here and we get this. So, this and this also would not be a 6, right? Now, let's look at the other diagonal. The 6 in box 7 eliminates these 3. We already have a 1 here. This 6 again does not allow for a 6 on this diagonal that is the top right bottom left this 6 does not place it here this does not place it here so this is the only place where the 6 can be on the top right bottom left diagonal which gives us all the other 6's that we have on the list. for me anybody can make a even a computer can generate a puzzle even people can create puzzles by hand. But especially when we are creating variants, for me, I would prefer that the constraint of the variant be used to solve the Sudoku. Otherwise, I, there's no fun in solving those kinds of Sudokus where you just solve it, even though by name it's a variant, but when you're solving it, it just solves like a classic with one odd place at the end where you have to use the constraint. I somehow love puzzles where the constraints start playing a role right from the beginning of the puzzle. Alright, now enough of lectures, let's get back to the puzzle. So, now that we have done with the sixes, let's look at this nine. Nine cannot be here, it can't be here, so this is the place for nine. And by classic rules, this would be a nine. Right? So, in this box, nine has to be in these two. So that would make this a 9. Alright. Now we have too many places where the digit 9 can be. But like, once again, let's use the top left to the bottom right diagonal. The 9 cannot be on the diagonal in box 1. It cannot be in box 9. So the only place the digit 9 can be on the diagonal is either here or here because this 9 it does not allow a 9 in R5 steep. Right? Now what? Now we go to the other diagonal, like always. The 9 and the diagonal from top right to bottom left, the 9 cannot be in box 3. It cannot be in box 5 as well because for box 5, the 9 is locked in R4C4 and R6C6. These are the only two places where a 9 can be, which basically means the 9 cannot be on this diagonal. So, in box 5 that is. So the only place for left for 9 on the second diagonal is at R7C3. So we can safely place a 9 there. Right? Good. Now let's look at the Threes. So this is a three, this is a three, this is a three. Three cannot be here. This three cannot be here. So the three is logged in this diagonal. Oh, nice. The three has to be on the diagonal, the top right to bottom. So when I look at these three, I can safely eliminate the three from here and this would be a three. And with this three, this is a three, three, three. And the three can be anywhere. All right. Now, how do we use this to serve our purpose? Oh, before we go to the threes, let's do this by classic rules. Four cannot be here. It be here, so this becomes a two seven two seven and a five. All right. This would be a two eight two eight two eight four two eight four. All right. Now come. Coming back to the threes. 
how do we use this positioning of the threes to locate the next number once again we run to our helper which is the diagonal let's look at the top left to bottom right diagonal the three cannot be in box one right in box five there's only one place and in box nine there's only one place on the diagonal where the three can be so in all when i look at the top left to bottom right diagonal there are only two places how do we use this now i'll circle these two cells all right and let's look at cells which are common to both or buddy to both these basically what i'm trying to say is cells where which can be seen by both these cells so for example the junction point i'll mark this and this because this cell r8c5 is in the same column as r5c5 and the same row as r8c8 similarly this three is in the same row with r5c5 and r8c how does that help us what it says is especially when there are only two places on a diagonal for a digit where it can occur the, that digit cannot repeat on the body cells that is if this is a 3 or this is a 3 the 3 cannot be in these two now you may ask me how and why so let's look at it the other way if this was a 3 right and since this is in the same column as r5c5 and the same row as r8c8 it would eliminate the 3 from both these cells and if that were to happen there would be no place on the top left bottom right diagonal for the digit 3 to be placed right similarly if the 3 was supposed to be in R5C8, it would again eliminate this 3 because it's in the same row. And it would eliminate this 3 also because it's in the same row. And this is a very nice and important trick that you can always use when you're solving a diagonal trick. So having used this, since you have eliminated 3 from here, the 3 for box 8 is locked in column 6. If the 3 is locked here, this cannot be a 3 for me. So in the top right to bottom left diagonal, there's only one place where a digit 3 can occur. And that would be here. And once we have this 3, obviously it will open up a lot of options. This becomes a 3, so this becomes a 3, this becomes a 3, and this becomes a 3. And that one single step helped us fill all the threes in the gray right so now let's use the seven seven is here here so the sevens have to be here right which basically means we again top left to bottom right the seven cannot be in these two it's not here so the only place for seven has to be with the nine is that correct? So this becomes a 7 9 pair for me. Correct? And this 5 cannot be on the diagonals, so this has to be a 5, which makes this a 2 4 pair. Good? So now when I look at this diagonal, I have a 1, I have a 2, I have a 3 and a 4, a 5, 6. 7 and 8 are the only missing digits and 7 in this box so this has to be an 8 this becomes a 7 so i made this as my 2 8 pair this becomes a 7 and this is a 7 so this would be a 4 5 and a 4 5 all right but can i have a 4 here because of this so no this is a 2 this is a 4 so this becomes a 2 Seven, nine, seven, seven, nine. So this would be a four, five option. And where will I go? Two, eight, two, eight, four, five. 
All right, so this would be two point five five. So this also would be seven. This is a two five. This is a two five. Going to be a nine eight seven six five is possible. Four three two. two five eight. All right. We get another pair here, two five. So I can safely eliminate the two and five because you have, my already the pair is logged in R two and R four. So this is a four, this is a five, this becomes a two, four, five, five, four. And now that you have got the five on the diagonal, we know for sure this has to be a two, five, two, two, eight. This has to be two and an eight, right? But with this two, this will be two eight. So eight cannot be here, and two cannot be there. So this has to be four, eight, five, four. And, sorry, we already have a four. five and nine. So nine and five, nine, two, eight. And that was how this was supposed to be solved. This is one of my favorite puzzles because I simply love the way in every step the diagonal had to be used in order to find a place for a digit or eliminate the possibilities. I hope you enjoyed the Sudoku as much as I did. If you did so, please like the video, share it with your friends and family. Let them know about it. And if you have any feedback, sorry, if you have any feedback for us, do let us know through comments or personal messages. And once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do go ahead and subscribe to it and ring the bell icons so that you are notified. So till the next time, happy solving.